Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to talk about the Syria response, <laughs> which, is, which would be really nice, but um, it's just a, a blended training that we did for the Syria staff, the response staff that I'm going to talk about, um, <clears throat> which is again kind of talking about the Syria response itself. So, World Vision um, International, it's an international um, NGO, uh, child focused. Christian community base. And um, we do a lot of humanitarian work plus also uh, development work as well in most part of the world. Uh, just a glimpse on our Syria response, because I'm not going to go into much into the Syria response itself, but what's our Syria response? Our Syria rep response is a multi country response. It's not only in Syria, it's out of Syria as well. Uh, basically, it covers um, Syria itself, plus also Turkey, Iraq, Jordan, and Lebanon. And it also covers um, IDPs and refugees within those uh, countries. Um, and the working area is mostly education, child protection, um, food and cash assistance, water, sanitation, and health. And we have expanded a bit more into uh, sectors as well, very recently. Um, Basically, 23 million people, half of them are children, and a bit of a fraction on youth as well, um, onto some of the peace building protection programs. Um, it's obviously highly fragile and sensitive as well. And this is one of the reasons why we keep on training our staff in conflict sensitivity, basically conflict sensitivity, specifically focusing on do no harm principles, but also a bit on peace building as well, to sustain our program um, uh, for a, a future sustainability kind of work. Now, <clears throat> so basically this is about um, how do we do that uh, staff capacity building? We invest a lot as an organization, we invest a lot on staff capacity building in many areas, sectoral programming, um, and many other things, cross-cutting themes as well. But specifically, I'm going to talk about integrating peace building and conflict sensitivity, which is um, IPACs and do no harm. That's a package, a training that we have made compulsory for our development and humanitarian response staff, specifically compulsory for the humanitarian staff because we go with a lot of good intention into the Syria response, the crisis response, but with all those good um, intentions, unknowingly, we do a lot of harm as well. That's, that's something that we have found out. But in order to mitigate that, we make, we make sure that our staff are equipped with do no harm principles, that they follow those principles when they go and deliver this um, aid. So what we had earlier, like 10, 15 years back, is a 10-day training program face to face. That has been a practice. And later on, we realized that specifically for the development staff, it works because they have the time, they have the money, long-term investments, because World Vision is a sponsorship organization. And it has a long-term commitment from sponsors, um, child sponsors. So in a way, it was a bit easier to handle all those 10-day training programs and things like that. But then later on, we figured out for humanitarian crisis, the response, it was difficult. Um, it was becoming so problematic. It's not only about like how do we do those trainings, but also investment, time investment for 10 days, humanitarian staff to come and go through that 10 day face-to-face -face only training, that, that was not really possible. Cost, 10 day training, residential, flying them in, that was really costly. Selection of right staff with right capacity, uh, to come into those trainings. Like, um, recruitment is very fast, and sometimes people leave also very fast. And then we can't like expect everybody, every single person, the staff, to have all the, the needed uh, criteria, the capacities to go through a training like that. Um, <clears throat> and also we had problems with continuity, the following up after the trainings, how do we do this? Like, we just lose contact after they go back and they are just submerged into their humanitarian response. And also, the trainings within the organization, specifically for us, the peace building and conflict sensitivity training became organizational specific. And when they go out, 
they are not branded. They, don't, they are not recognized for the capacity that they have obtained internally because everything became like it's just for your work within World Vision. So we wanted to make sure that there is common recognition within this industry standard so that when they go into other organizations, they are still recognized for what they have gone through. Okay, so, so we, we revisited our, our uh, training programs. What we really wanted to achieve, the, the, the knowledge, the attitude, the skills, are we covering all of these um, appropriately? And then the, 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 the last part of certification. It's not only World Vision certification process, but also we wanted to make it an industry standard, like bringing um, external perspectives into this. Because do no harm is not a World Vision tool. That's an external interagency tool. So we wanted to bring that link into the organization. OK, so that's when we got to know about Moodle. Um, for Moodle, I am a content person. Um, I, I'm not really a designer, though I got involved in the designing process, but we have a colleague here who is Kim Lim from World Vision. She's, the, she's from the technical side of it. So like, I'm just introducing that because I'm getting ready for the questions at the end. But <laughs> um, so this is where Moodle comes in. And I really like yesterday's designing, the designing masterclass where Tom was saying, like, Whatever that's not you are feeling uncomfortable, where, where you are feeling uncomfortable to do, deal with, dump that into the Moodle. That's what we exactly did. I was like really amazed. So <clears throat> we had web access within the Moodle system. And this is, uh, this is nothing like new for World Vision, but like how we manage all these web access, ample of web access within that period of time, which is 10 weeks with a four week break. So for 10 weeks, we had a lot of webinars. And this is normal for an online process. So the first process was the online process we had for 10 weeks with a four-week break. So <clears throat> participants from five, six countries, they were in their own countries participating in an online process through a selection process. And they went through all these um, ingredients, the web access, videos, quizzes, documents, which are PDF, Word, or whatever. Um, they participated in discussion forums, practice and report. They go back, do some practice as teams, country teams, come back and report, upload assignments. Um, and also, we linked in um, with the Moodle platform, the Skype groups as well. To an extent, we tried the Google Doc system as well, which was really interesting, like bringing in many other platforms together. Um, they did individual assignments. They did um, uh, group assignments together as country teams. And also, we managed to bring in monkey surveys in. Um, and one of the best part was self-assessment at the initial stages, at the latter stages. And also, we carried this forward into the face-to-face -face section as well. Um, and then the Google Docs and how they simultaneously started working as country teams. Now, this went the online section, which we introduced for them, uh, the multi-country, uh, went on for 10 weeks with four, breaks, uh, four weeks of breaks. Now, we introduced a mentoring system. And this is what I really loved about the Moodle is that we brought in internal mentors plus also external mentors. When I say external, we were thinking about the mentorship, not only internal mentorship, mentorship but also external mentorship. Moodle allows us to have observers and also people mentoring from external, like CDA, Collaborative Development Action, who are the founders of Do No Harm. So giving recognition for internal participants was like really easy. We call this online platform the eCampus for World Vision. So that was the online process. And then we had uh, a face-to-face -face process, which we had for uh, six days in Jordan, a place considered to be a bit safer, so where we brought all the 20-plus um, participants from all those five countries into one place. Now, <clears throat> even here, during the face-to-face, -face, the platform was really helpful for us because to have that continuity of going back into the webinars, which were stored um, in a weekly process, we could go back. Because in the, in the earlier stages, it was really Unlikely that we tracked all those webinar recordings because it was in Lotus Notes, it was in somewhere else, the links were gone, missing, people didn't have track. 
but also we managed um, the face-to-face -face wars, classroom exercise for two days, and then uh, a bit of a practicum within the classroom with the Moodle platform itself, like doing self-assessments, reflecting on that, and also a bit of evaluation in the same database. And then they go to the field. They go to the field and do some exercises, come back, do some reporting, and do some communication as well. Now, just as I mentioned earlier in the, in the uh, previous slide, something that we didn't like is getting those reports back into our hands because we keep losing those track and we kept losing, like compiling all those properly. Moodle helped us to bring those assignments onto one place, go on like editing in a proper way and sharing it with the necessary people. So um, it, was, it was six days and the evaluation was also done through the Moodle itself on a real time process. Um, so that we, we have it ar archived, we can take it at any time, it's in a single place where the whole system holds all this information together. And after the online, the next phase was go back, go back to your job. Now this is something that we struggled to do earlier because we lost track. Now the same platform, the Moodle platform, enabled us to have the track. And this helped us to the, the country teams to go back, work as a country team, do their practicum, and report back on assignments. Not only assignments, but also to participate in discussion forums at country levels, plus also as a response level, multi-country response. And of course, it allowed us to bring in mentors on a continuous basis because they were part of the forums, externals and internals as well, and also like linked into the Skype forums. Now this is, six months to one year because of the nature of the response. Now, to an extent, it's still going on. Now, the last part is linking them into a proper certification process. Now, there, we used all the badging, badges as well within the system, but also we made sure that we have another internal system which is called the Global Technical Resources Network. We tried to merge these two things together so that like anybody coming out of this training are still connected to those system that they go through a certification process so that it's not only an internal recognition process but also they are recognized externally and they get deployment opportunities through this process. So, so we ended up having the subject matter experts uh, through the process itself. Now, <clears throat> what happened is um, once they, are gone through, they have gone through this process, uh, the cohort is done. And uh, the best thing about this, the whole process, is that now we are getting ready for the second cohort. Um, and uh, we are really happy we don't have to redesign the whole course. And we, do, we don't have to have everything on the papers. Um, it's already done. So it's just a matter of getting it offline, do some edits, and upload it for the next cohort. So we are basically looking at the next cohort for um, Syria response number two, plus also East Africa region, which is going through another um, round of crisis within that region. Just wanted to lastly highlight some of the things that they liked, the participants liked, rather than being on a 10-day face-to-face only thing, is um, they, they really like the small group discussions at their country levels before even they came to face to face where they were like mixed um, after that. They really like the quizzes. Um, they were also able to see the results. We gave them printouts when they came and also they were able to do that again. Um, <coughs> they obviously like the rest weeks. Now the rest weeks were built into the system but these rest weeks were not just rest week. The, the webinars were uh, built into that system so that they can, the people who didn't participate, couldn't participate, could go back, look at the webinars, look at the schedules, and have that continuity and do some catch up with the mentors. And also we did the Google Doc sim simulation uh, linked to the Moodle, so which was really great. Um, <clears throat> and we had a lot of self-assessment starting from the initial stages to um, the second stages of face-to-face, uh, -face, but also even now we do a bit of self-assessment where they are now. Um, yeah, thank you. So 
It was really helpful for us to achieve our goal, the mission, the vision um, of making this better place, uh, specifically the Suicidia response, better place for children. Um, so thank you so much. <laughs>